Hello everybody, I just wanted to go ahead and note uh, all of the changes that I have found so far for the companion druid and various things like that because there's some pretty big changes so I wanted to share it to you uh, as quickly as I could so let me go ahead and show you guys what I have found. Alright, first off, your wolves are now werewolves when they are affected by aspect of the alpha. This is massive, why? Because guess what? When you have dire wolf's chain you can use them inside of Grizzly Rage now. All right, this gives us access to a really big multiplicative damage bonus. However, however, let me show you this next change. Let me show you this next change. So, um, our wolves, I'm very confused still, and I'm still testing this, but wolf attack speed, and I'm, I'm thinking that wolves might actually have two attack speed buckets because Look at how they changed Wild Rage. Your companions gain double the bonus from the Bestial Rampage key passive. So, um, yeah. So that means this, this key passive here is giving your wolves a 100% damage increase. It's giving them a 60% attack speed buff, right? So the interesting thing here is if they do have a cap, because of Bestial Rampage, that means we might only need to run two wolf attack speeds. And that's it, right? Because our, we're getting double the bonus. So they changed this. Initially, what this was in the previous season was, it just allowed your companions to be able to gain the bonus at all. But now, since they gain 100% of our stats, they have to change it. Your companions gain double the bonus from the Bestial Rampage key passive. Now, this makes sense because I'm going to be real with you guys. I was decimating things. I have been absolutely crushing things. I mean, I have, I'm doing things that are 40 levels higher than me with not with the only issue just being my survivability because they nerf survivability by a lot, right? Like I can actually play companion druid almost like a, a companion druid. I just kind of let them run around and I'm like a caster. Like it's crazy. Like in if um, and if you watch my video about the impressions and you watch any of that background footage, that was me just absolutely obliterating the capstone dungeons when i was like 20 levels down it was definitely not like that last season it really wasn't um i think companion druid is much stronger than what people are giving it credit for with the downside of this here's the biggest downside the wolves if they get hit by chain explosions do still seem to die now i have not pushed up super high so i am suspecting that the wolves might still struggle but that being said, um, the nerf to the respawn rate is massive. It really doesn't feel bad at all when they die anymore. Like, if they all die at once to an explosion, you wait five seconds, you keep going. Like, that's it. That's all it is. Like, and honestly, they really don't die that often. Like, they have to be hit by an absolute... You have to send them into, like, a room of, like... I don't know 10 things that all have AOE abilities. That's the only time I have ever seen these things die I'm talking like the worst of the worst rooms and even then sometimes they don't die Actually a lot of times they still don't die because if you have storms companion and it does that blink like that blink effect Just is just like a godsend, right? So yeah, um really big changes to wolves, right? So in kind of circling back to the whole grizzly rage thing now that we can use this in grizzly rage We have to make an interesting choice here. It's like well, do we use Grizzly Rage with this? Because uh, we can get it up to a 33.5 second duration. So that means we could get like a potential of like a 110% bonus damage with this. But at the same time, it's like we don't, we then don't have a way to, uh, we then don't have a way to proc, um, Bestial Rampage, and with Bestial Rampage, they get 100% multiplicative increased damage. So I did want to note that, you know, the whole Grizzly Rage thing, it's cool, but I'm not 100% certain that it's actually going to be like some best in slot thing. With the bonus that we get from Grizzly Rage being, we actually do have access to Rampaging Werebeast, which would then give us a 200% multiplicative bonus uh, to our critical strike damage. So it would make it to where with that plus AV and Wrath, um, there could actually be an argument, like, I don't know, I'd have to actually, like, math it out to see which one's the best, but just because of how much critical strike damage you can get, 
Uh, I mean, right now I only have 133%, but as you go up from Paragon and various other things, like I think in the Max Roll Planner, I have like 500% uh, or, so, or something like that. I have like 500% or something like that. And you can get it up even higher because I switched it all over to Willpower. So if you switch it over, you could have like, you know, 1,000%, which you could triple up to 3,000%. And then when you stack that also with your Avian Wrath, which is also giving you another 30%. And then... Um, you also stack that up with Invenom, which actually increases the critical strike damage multiplier as well. Um, like, I don't know. Like, there's, I feel like that's actually competitive to say, hmm, do we go Grizzly Rage or do we go, you know, it's like, or, or do we go Bestial Rampage? In my opinion, I think I'm going to keep going Bestial Rampage. I am going to make a Grizzly Rage setup at some point just to test it. But for right now, Bestial Rampage, for all intents and purposes, is definitely the easier one to go because you don't have to go stack CDR. You don't really have to have a, you know, you don't have to have two different aspects. You just need Wild Rage, and you're pretty much good to go. <laughs> like literally, like if you want to play Companion Druid in Season Four and blow everything off the damn screen, just run Claw, run Maul, pick up a Wild Rage. There you go. Like, and that's, I mean, we have Aspect of the Alpha, but it's like, yeah, sure, that's cool, but like. If you can't find your aspect of the alpha, hell, you find this, and man, you're going to be off to the races if you're running all three of these. Because the thing about uh, Bestial Rampage, and I think it's so interesting about all of this, is the fact that Poison Creeper and Ravens benefit from like all of this. Like they just have, they get so much benefit. Like it's so, it seem, almost seems so easy to increase the damage of all three companion skills. Now I will say this: obviously, Wolves is the highest damage companion skill right now. Um, it actually has taken the lead because it has access to ax uh, aspect of the alpha and ravens and poison creeper don't actually have a dedicated legendary that's going to increase their damage right so um yeah but at the same time it still does a lot like like i said i've been playing pretty much a zoo druid version of this um where it's it's somewhat similar to what i was running before and i've just been crushing everything so i haven't had any problems at all like at all and i still have so much room on this like i would actually go to say that the amount of damage i'm doing right now at level 75 feels like the amount of damage i was doing with like perfected gear in season three and honestly i might actually be doing more still if i'm being completely honest with myself i still i think it honestly still feels like i'm actually doing even more um and i still have room to grow right so you have call of the wild here your companion skills deal 48 percent uh bonus damage well, right here we have plus one to Call to the Wild. You can actually get that up to plus five. So we're still missing uh, four times 12, like another 48% damage there. I don't even have perfect aspects. I'm still missing, you know, 20% here. I'm missing, you know, 4% on Edge Masters. And uh, I'm missing 13% here. Like I'm missing almost like 100% damage uh in all of this like when you really like go through and kind of tally and add things up i'm missing like 100 damage and what i can do on my necklace is i could also run in venom i could run the two ranks of in venom which i think might go up to three once you have it masterworked at 12 possibly um right and then i could run like the five ranks of call of the wild and then you know you'd, it'd be crazy so um yeah so now uh i think that's that's kind of my soapbox about wolves and the bestial rampage but now um, I want to show you guys a more about the companion CDR. Okay, so with companion CDR, hold up here, hold up oh, over here. Okay, uh, so with companion CDR, I have 30% here. I have 30% here. I have, uh, do, 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 where is it at, where is it at, right here. I have this right here. So before I initially thought that this would stack kind of additively or if it said you had 90 percent, you get 90 percent. somebody commented says hey i think you're wrong and i realized hey i might actually be wrong i went and looked up how cdr traditionally works and it does work like he said um but what i realized is if you notice it doesn't say plus cdr like the other ones do it just says 29 percent wolf's cooldown reduction it doesn't say plus 29 percent. it just says 29 percent so that's a very big distinction and i noticed that a after i got into the game i said wait a second why isn't there a plus sign next to this like most other stats um and so i went and that kind of prompted me to look now i'd have to go look and see i don't think i have like a helm that has normal cdr because i don't know maybe for whatever reason they just dropped it but 
They put a cap at 75%, but you can see here that I have a 3.94 second CDR. So that means with just these three, I am actually able to hit uh, the max or the lowest cooldown that you can hit. So that means that with regular CDR plus companion CDR, which I don't have the legendary version of this yet. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So I don't, ha I don't have the legendary version of companion efficiency yet. But you can see here you can get You'll be able to get 12.5, I believe, is what the companion one is. So with the companion one, you can get up to 52 and a half. So that means if you were to stack cooldown on other pieces of gear, so let's say you picked up a totem, rolled cooldown on it, got a helm with cooldown on it, they don't have to be perfect rolls. You could probably get it up to that 75% cap on all three of these skills. So that's pretty interesting for Zoo Druid because then it kind of begs the question, how important is pack leader actually, right? So it's important, right? And you're still gonna wanna have it. But the question is, is like how often we proc it, does it actually matter as much as what it did in previous seasons? Because that's something I've been thinking about because I'm kind of thinking Maul is really good. Um, I haven't seen anybody else run this specific combination, um, but I actually think Maul with Fevered Mauling, an aspect of might might be like just the best basic skill available right now aside from if you're running like storm strike or something like that now if you're running like storm claw doesn't really uh, affect you because you know you get storm strike for casting claw so you get a 15 percent damage reduction from your claw um but you look here it says when you hit at least one enemy with maul increase the attack speed by 2.5 percent so you get 10 percent attack speed and you get 50 or 20 up to 20 percent damage reduction depending on what you roll so like that's that's kind of nutters like am i crazy like that's um in in my opinion that's that's pretty good i mean because when you also pair that up with aspect of might i mean you're talking about tw uh 40 percent damage reduction for spamming maul and maul also stacks fortify but the issue with maul here is that so claw has a chance to attack twice right and it also uh, has an extremely high like lucky hit coefficient. So generally speaking, when I use Claw, I proc it way more often than using anything else. Um, but the thing is, is this has a 32%. So we're losing 20% lucky hit chance, but we're gaining so much defense. Like, and don't get me wrong, you can run Aspect of Might. So like really all you're gaining is the 20% DR. So it's really like you trade 20% lucky hit chance coefficient for 20% DR and uh, a little bit easier access to fortify than what we had what we had last season because since with the changes to wild rage it makes it really hard to justify uh doing the whole like symbiotic aspect etc um because like back in the day when i was doing that well wild rage was only like a 50 percent it was only a 30 percent bonus at the time or 20 percent maybe it's like a 20 percent bonus to damage like a 20 percent bonus to attack speed now it's a hundred percent bonus to damage and a 60 percent bonus to attack speed you kind of can't not run that with uh with your companions like you kind of like you kind of can't so yeah um so that's uh that's an interesting combination you know it's it's an interesting question to ask is like since with the defense changes you know is it going to be more worth it to run fevered mauling aspect of might over claw but then we have to ask ourselves the question, well, how the heck, you know, do we, what way do we trigger our werewolf passives uh, efficiently? And I mean, like, I guess we could use, I guess we could use shred, but personally, I don't really like shred that much. And it also makes it awkward if we want to end up using pulverize. So um, one answer to this question is uh, specifically, so I'm running the Zoodroid setup right here, but uh, one answer one answer to the question would actually just be, uh, you know, drop ravens, honestly. Like, you just drop ravens, leave poison creeper, uh, leave wolves, and then, uh, you know, run, like, blood howl or another, uh, or another werewolf ability, and then you could run maul and then pulverize, which kind of blows in a way because, you know, I kind of liked the, the... I like the werewolf aesthetic more than I like the bear aesthetic, but at the same time, I think... You know the whole idea of i posted about the other day with like pulverize and reducing damage etc and stuff like that um might kind of seems like it might just be better but i don't know it's it's really going to come down to like how many times can we proc you know this lucky hit and versus you know how important is that 20 percent dr end up being to us especially when you also compare that with the fact that wolves is only on a 3.94 second cooldown so i mean 
that's you know pretty damn good um yeah so that's uh yeah pretty crazy pretty good um let's see here is there anything else i talked about cooldown i talked about grizzly rage um what else what else what else what else what else have i found so i talked about the wild rage changes um i'm not really i'm not i don't think there's really i don't think there's anything particular to talk about aside from uh that does in fact mean that um where's we can if we do end up running uh to no 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 it's not what we want um oh and here's another interesting thing here sorry wall and werebear form you deal one percent increased damage so if they gain all of our stats um, this would actually theoretically increase the passive damage. So that's kind of an interesting thing if we did run the whole werebear thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, but yeah, that means we do actually benefit from critical strike damage with werewolf skills. They are going to benefit from all this additive damage. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Less for Carnage now is going to be a pretty decent Paragon board, uh, for our wolfies. So that's something to, that's definitely something to think about. And then, yeah, if we do end up running, like, you know, a generator, it also gives us access to Ancestral Guidance. And because of this whole, you know, werewolf skill thing, I mean, man, we could crits with werewolf skills are going to restore two spirits. So it's like, man, huh. <laughs> you know, we might have easy ways to actually refund our refund our spirit. Granted, we would lose Edge Masters, but if we're running a core skill, it would be for a reason that probably kind of supersedes Edge Masters in a way. Because Edge Masters is just a real easy way to get an extra 20% damage buff. But Alright, um, I think that's going to do it though. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you next time. And I'll let you guys know uh, how my further testing goes. Thanks.